Good afternoon, everyone, uh, panelists, wherever you are. We'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to Kenya Tourism Board and Kenya Tourism Federation, our partnership to bring you the Making Digital Work webinar. This afternoon, we are looking at one and a half hours of excitement where we are going to take you through all the action and all the uh, efforts uh, Kenya Tourism Board has been making to place Kenya in this when it comes to matters digital. Many of you have been asking, what is Kenya Tourism Board doing? And there's a lot of stuff that they've been doing and this afternoon, those are some of the things that we'll be sharing. There are many ladies and gentlemen who've been working behind the scenes and here today, we'll be able to present to you. Wherever you're joining us from, I know many of you are not just in Nairobi. We have uh, people across you know, Kenya and some of you are joining us from outside Kenya. We'd like to say a very warm welcome and we say Karibuni Sana. My name is Mohamed Hersi, joining you from Mombasa and I'll be your moderator this afternoon. I'm the chairman of Kenya Tourism Federation, which is the umbrella body that brings together all the uh, private sector tourism associations in the country. And we engage government through KEPSA on any matter to deal with uh, tourism. We work with government very closely. And one of the organizations we work with is, of course, Kenya Tourism Board, who work very hard to position the destination. Ladies and gentlemen, grab your coffee, grab your tea, and we want you to enjoy this session. For first things first, let me take you through the um, house rules. Please keep your mic on mute so that we do not get any background noise. Then number two, we encourage you to raise your hand and to type in your questions in this question section. Try and avoid on the chat section so that we are able to follow all the questions that you are asking and we try as much as possible to respond to them. If a question has been asked, please move on to the next one so that we try as much as possible to get the best out of the session as well. Without any further ado, I would now like to take the opportunity to introduce to you Betty, who is Dr. Betty Radia. Betty, as we know her, is the MD of Kenya Tourism Board. Betty brings wealth of experience, and all of us, we know who Betty is, but allow me to allow, to ask, you know, Betty herself, Dr. Tari, uh, to say more about herself and take us through this session because as the MD of Kenya Tourism Board, she has been the one who's been working very hard to push uh, destination and magical Kenya for the matter. Uh, we have COVID crisis with us. We've been through many crises before, but this one, Dr. Tari, is one we've never seen before. But we believe you have what it takes with your team to take us out of these rough waters. Karibu, Betty. Thank you, Mohammed, and welcome to everybody on the, uh, in the meeting. Um, uh, as Mohammed said, this is one of those things that uh, you hope that you experience only once in a lifetime. <laughs> But um, as, as Mohammed also said, we are up to the task and uh, we have um, uh, understood that this is going to be something that is likely to change how we do a lot of things, um, not only um, uh, professionally, but also socially and economically. So as Mohammed mentioned, um, there's a lot of curiosity around, especially during a time as this where people are um, uh, uncertain, they've got fears, uh, they've got concerns, um, they, there's a lot that is um, in abeyance and people don't really know where they are, they want to know um, we have a partner who is supposed to support our business, um, has been helping to showcase the destination, what are they doing? So we've been on a couple of webinars and um, like most destinations, we started off uh, when COVID started um, and we were simply dealing with what COVID was, which was, it's a pandemic, what does that mean? Um, where are we, what are we going to be able to do? And once people settled, most destinations then um, started off with a fairly empathetic approach. 
uh, to COVID, which is human, but also is, is what you would do um, uh, as a responsible citizen or as a responsible global citizen. And um, uh, as soon as people had gotten over the, the fear and, and the shock of what was going on globally, um, destinations had to uh, figure out how will we remain relevant or what could we be doing or how could we be messaging. And therefore, the conversations from a number of different uh, destinations came, uh, came up, which was, uh, first of all, in support of what most governments were, were, were advocating, that people stay at home. Uh, but uh, there was also the cue that uh, there was an opportunity to bring hope. There was an opportunity for people to say, yes, we'll stay at home now, um, but this is not what we'll do uh, going forward. We are in the travel and tourism industry, we're in the hospitality industry. It's about getting out, getting together, meeting with people. So the, the, the communication that went out at the time was stay at home so you can travel tomorrow, stay home, stay safe, travel tomorrow. So we, we as a destination also put out communication like that, that was able to, first of all, appreciate what was going on with the sensitivity that was required. And then subsequently um, to give people that hope that indeed we will be able to travel again. And as we have gone through the past uh, three months, the face of COVID has changed. And the way people have been um, uh, engaging and, and, uh, and, and understanding what COVID really means um, has, has taken a different turn. And now people are speaking a lot to something they call the new normal and are becoming a lot more comfortable with it, which is a good thing. Uh, so destinations have begun to appreciate what is possible and what isn't. One of the things that is obvious is everybody's at home. And therefore, like uh, any good marketer or any good uh, person that sees an opportunity where they have a captive audience, there's an opportunity for us to reach out to people. So from staying at home uh, travel tomorrow, we moved to um, a series of communication that you may have been seeing already, which is what's going on in the destination. And we embraced partners that uh, will be joining us on this webinar to, to help them uh, uh, as our partners to share and, and showcase what it is that they were putting out there as their own initiative, uh, which we highly appreciate, uh, to help people know that Kenya still exists, the destination is still magical and has magical experiences to offer. So the today in the destination moved on from staying at home to today in the destination and subsequently to the magic awaits. And now the magic really awaits. Uh, what we then did is um, we moved on to start to embrace what people really need to, to appreciate, um, but also to see how it is that we will move forward as a destination. And therefore, we realized that indeed there's a captive audience. People are at home. Uh, COVID has been there. People are under lockdown. They're consuming content as they never have. Netflix consumers, uh, the consumer base grew by 75%. This is a channel that, that possibly uh, gives uh, people that are at home an opportunity, first of all, to um, get some relief from, from, the, from, the, from the new normal, which is you work on Zoom for most of the time. So you need some downtime. Uh, we've also seen uh, the in internet at a all time high over 70, 75%, Safaricom data usage over 70%, and, and, and most uh, people in this sector have seen a surge in, in usage. So what that says to an op a person that wants to put out information, that is a captive audience, that is a channel that can be used. So when we, looked at, when we look at travel and we said, um, what can we do to help our partners to ready ourselves to be a destination that will be able to get conversion. Yes, COVID is here, but there's things we can do. So we started to say, what, what should we think in terms of uh, travel content? In, tra in, in terms of travel, content is essential because people are not seeing anything. So the first wave of travel, uh, content is going to be important and information is going to be important. We are not overlooking things that are at the heart of 
what will overcome the fear of people just determining I will go out there. All your health protocols, all the readiness that, uh, that uh, destinations have to have, the, 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 the rules around a reopening, those will continue to be there. But if we focus for a moment on what we can do in terms of giving people a nudge and saying, we know their rules, we know their health um, uh, considerations, but there is something that you can go and experience and that you can plan for. So the reality is, is, is the focus shifted from travel now to future. But even in travel future, there's a planning phase. And this is the, the, the phase that we're taking full advantage of. And in, taking, uh, uh, and, and in taking advantage of this phase, we know that we need to keep consumers engaged. Static um, content is great. Live content is much better. 360 con content is really where you get people to say, I will experience that when I get an opportunity. So making sure that people are engaged and, and connected to Kenya is very important and it's great. So in doing this, what we did, uh, we found that, yes, we have a whole digital space that, uh, that uh, has social media in it, which is, is blended with mixed messages that are positive, negative, um, personal points of view, uh, innovation around uh, uh, social media, innovation around the digital space. People have used creativity um, in terms of, of, of putting out even videos that are a cappella singing. People are, are discovering their skills and, and sharing them with people out there. There's travel specific media channels, but those are not speaking too much to what's currently going on. Then, of course, uh, we have our partners in the private sector, and there's a lot of user-generated user content. And, and this is what people are consuming. You find that the mainstream media, as we know it, is, is, is being looked at mainly for news and, and, and for information around what's going on with the, with the pandemic, what's going on with uh, opening up, what's going on with um, uh, economies in terms of how they are surviving. So the content that we needed to put out there, there's a couple of things that we identified the content as needing to deliver for. So there has to be some inspiration. People must feel inspired when they look at this content. People must have a sense of, it allows me to escape from my current normal to what would be the new normal, but also gives me that pleasure and, and that nostalgia of when I could travel. And people like that. Um, this, there's some con emotional connection, some reassurance, some, some, uh, some reassurance that um, we will not talk about safety because that's not really a marketing message, but it is inherent in what it is that you see. We will not talk about hygiene, we rather show that we are ready. So as we move from the content that is about inspiring you, that is about engaging you, we will start to move to the content that will help you to make the decision. Because we know when restrictions are lifted, it doesn't mean that recovery is immediate. There's got to be some work to be done in front of that. And, and once those restrictions are, are lifted, then people will start to make very specific decisions around who did I see? What did I see that was exciting? What did I see that was engaging? What did I see that is something that I want to actually experience? And therefore the destination has to be front and center. So when we, we said, how and who do we need to target? We said, a lot of our traditional travelers will still be the people that are out there trolling the net to see what lie, where can I go? What is opening up? How will I be able to get there? how they set up so that I'm feeling comfortable about uh, going to the place. Identifying the first wave of tourism. And this is what everybody's looking out for. We're looking and saying, who's opening, who's flying, where are the protocols ready? How will we fly? When will we go there? And that's really what's important to people at the moment. But we are also looking for that fearless traveler. The one who will have been able to have been um, engaged by destination engaged with the content that's out there. And therefore, this, this brings us to our webinar today. And our webinar today is about the opportunity to, to use live streaming, to be able to, to close in on that um, 
escapism to close in on that um, uh, encouragement, to close in on that content that is captivating, that makes you feel, I am going to make that decision that says, I will go out there. And the key messages around this is inspiration, it's freedom, it's independence, it's all of the things that you want to be able to tell yourself before you come to the point where you're talking about aviation net access, travel accessibility, health protocols, those will come after. Experience will always be paramount. If you can show that your experience goes above the next person's experience, then even if you're long haul, people make decisions that override that. Even if they're thinking about value for money, they make decisions that override that. So in media, what are we wanting to do within the media space? We have to have strong visual content. Content that is engaging, that is captivating, that is interesting to look at, and that changes daily. Virtual live streaming allows us to do that. Visual that you can build a story around. People want to have experiences. They want to know those experiences are diverse, but they want to have a story around that experience. Virtual live stream allows us to do that. Social media content that you can use, reuse, reshare, and boost to make people see in different places of the world what you have to offer at multiple times or concurrently. It allows us to do that because this is live content. Yes, you may not see it live, but just the fact that you're able to see what the live was is, is compelling enough for you to move and look at it. And then it gives you content that you start to move into um, areas that you can target people on. There's people who are interested in conservation, people who are interested in birding, people who are interested in nature, people who are interested in community sustainability, people who are interested in conservation. Those are the things. And then people who are just simply interested in wildlife and the storytelling around wildlife, their habitat, their habits. And these are things that we would even as travelers not have taken time to consider. But now when it's brought to us, it will even change our mindset in terms of when I go there, I now know what to look out for. Yes, I want to see the big five, but it's not the only thing that there is to see. So in order not for us, for me to spend too much time talking about it, I'll now hand back over to Mohammed. That gives you an outline of where we are. This is the space that we have been participating in as a destination and we'll continue to participate in. But what we want to make sure is we are going ahead of the curve in terms of being able to provide things that will give us a, 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 a competitive advantage, even as the markets open. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Dr. Ari, Betty Radia. That was a great opener to put us all in the mood on what we expect today. For those of you who are joining us late, uh, welcome once again to Embracing Digital Marketing for Travel Trade, brought to you by Kenya Tourism Board and Kenya Tourism Federation. Now, what will you be expecting this afternoon? We'll be discussing shifts in content consumption since the beginning of COVID-19 pandemic. And this is something EMD, KTB has expounded very shortly. Then, We'll be also to this session, after this session rather, we should be able to help you to know who you're going to target and how you're going to do it. Because we have got a panel of experts who will help you do that. Some of them, you know them, and some of them for the first time you're meeting them. And then we are going also to share success stories, not from outside Kenya, but right here at home. People who have done it and people who are already using it because we keep on seeing some of us sharing other destinations. I think. After this session, many of you would like to start looking inside out rather than outside in, the good stuff that Kenyans have been doing. Next now, I'd like to introduce to you the next panelist, gentleman that we are all conversant with, someone who has been with Kenya Tourism Board for very many years, and he is actually one of us. In this lockdown, he is one of us. He's right here in Kenya, and he is helping us to position the destination. That is none other than Damien Cook. Damien, you all know him from the e-tourism frontier. And he also consults for many other destinations, but his love for Kenya is second to none. 
And today, Damian is living to that adage by making sure that he's actually reporting from somewhere in the wild all the way in like APR. Damian, Aribu Sana, thank you. Yes, Damian. Sorry, just unmuting myself there. Uh, thanks so much, Mohammed, and welcome everybody. Um, I'm just sharing my screen. Am I still loud and clear on audio? Very loud and clear. Tell us, give us your specific location. We're not coming to arrest you. I'm actually not in Lake Kipia. I'm in Kamana um, Sanctuary, which is uh, by Amseli National Park. Uh, but I've been moving around the country uh, as part of this project that we're working on. Um, go to us there because you didn't tell us your new location, but good to <laughs> see that you're coming closer to the coast. Thank you. Yes. Uh, this project to bring Kenya to the world and the world to Kenya, picking up a lot on what Betty said. As Mohammed mentioned, I work with a lot of destinations um, and they're all been making their way through this, this crisis period. Um, and they're all facing the same challenge of how do they in keep engaged with their clientele? How do they keep engaged with potential travelers? And how do they keep the destination top of mind? I'm, Kenya is my home, as many of you know, and I've been here throughout the lockdown period and been talking a lot to Betty about how we do this and do this differently uh, to the way that other people, other destinations have handled it. Um, let me just go back to my one. So we developed this project over the last couple of months, which is to use technology, typically technology and other content production technologies um, to keep our, our, our markets engaged. But as I said, we wanted, we wanted to do it Many of you may have seen live streams that have been happening during this time. A lot of people have referenced other uh, safari-based live streams that have been running around the country that you may have seen, but no destination in Africa has actually created a dedicated channel for content like this. Those have sat within the private sector. And we looked at what we wanted to do. One of the obvious things that people talked about was let's live stream game drives. And that's good. Um, and that does get some engagement as you've seen, but I also think that it's quite limiting. Um, you're very limited to one camera, to one wildlife experience. And also you've got to look at people's time and people's focus. It's a big ask for someone to spend two or three hours sitting online watching that content. Um, you also have to wonder if someone who can afford that amount of time is someone who's likely to travel again. So we wanted to do a bit differently to mix up this content that we streamed live. Um, away from just game drives and into that experiential content, showing as much as we can that Kenya has to offer. Of course, we had challenges of travel. We needed to get organized and cleared to do this. Um, that took some time, but we've now got a crew with me here uh, who are traveling around the country throughout all of June and all of July, producing nonstop content. We had some challenges to overcome. Any of you who are working online may know, particularly once you get out of our larger cities, out into the national parks, reserves, and other areas, that connectivity is a, is a huge challenge um, when it comes to sufficient phone signal to be able to stream live from your phone uh, or sometimes even to post content. We had to look at how we'd overcome that. And also I thought that we needed to go beyond the opportunity of just live streams and produce content that we can share in other ways as well. So we're not just using devices that can live stream, but we have a professional team of filmmakers, wildlife photographers, um, Kenyans and international photographers with us who are going around making content as we go, summarizing what we showed live into professionally produced films that KTV can use in campaigns going forward to really drive the Kenyan story in a very compelling way. Picking up on all those things Betty talked about, experience, emotional connection to the destination. Our first and biggest challenge, of course, as I said, was that connectivity though. How are we going to do this? Um, we had to look into the technology that would enable this to happen. And Safaricom partnered with us um, to enable us to get access. Now I need to go back to my camera here. This is a slight challenge. Um, how do I do that? I need to get myself back on camera here. Uh, I think Paul, do you have to do that to get me back on my screen? Or do I have to stop sharing? Can you show me? You can now see yourself, right? Uh, yes, I'm talking. I should be appearing, right? Have you got me? Great. Well, we can Brilliant. see you, yes. So the challenge was how do we get and stay online? We had to go beyond just a phone for that. So we were using a technology that you can see here, which is effectively a backpack. Inside this backpack is a device called a bonded modem. Inside here are, is a device connected to eight different SIM cards. Uh, it aggregates all of that signal together into one continuous live stream that enables us to stream at 
very high speed, we're on a good connectivity, or to find connectivity when we have challenges and areas we're in. Um, it's been a challenge. It's the first time we've used one of these in the field. It's been a learning experience getting to use it, but we're learning to overcome um, some of those technological challenges. So that managed to get us online. I'm going to go back to my presentation now. As you do that, uh, Demian, I'd like to remind all our attendees and everyone that we have a hashtag, making digital work 254. Making digital work 254. So please help us to make it trend because we're in the digital space. Carry on, Demian. So what we're doing is traveling around the country. Um, now, obviously, one of the challenges is that not many tourist businesses are open. Most of our lodges, hotels, and camps are not open. So at previous webinars, we put out a call to people that could open to support us and help us, to help us do that. Um, we've gotten some great support from members of the industry that have helped us work to make this happen. But I'm going to show you as we go forward this afternoon how all of you can get involved as well. This is about involving as many people and as many stories as we can. And I'm going to show you how we can get access to your content as well. And we didn't want to just show animals the way some of those live streaming game drives has. We want to focus on actual storytelling. Also appealing to that first wave of travelers we're going to see. The intrepid, the adventurous, people that are interested in nature, with the open spaces and natural social distancing that Kenya offers them will appeal. And also there's people with an interest in conservation and the ethics of travel and making sure they're supporting the protection of our wildlife um, as well when they travel and encouraging the trade to get involved and to share this content when we stream it, but also to share their content with us. So I'm gonna show you today how to do that and also give you some practical tips about how to produce your own content when it comes to cameras, equipment and connectivity. So we've been streaming live for 14 days now. Um, some of you hopefully have seen some of the streams we've done. We've been using this as a test to build up an initial audience. KTB are now gonna be aggressively boosting this content out to maximize that audience. But already in the first 14 days, we've reached almost 4.6 million viewers online. Uh, and as I said, we're trying to show a variety of different experiences. Keep in mind that, uh, and, and you, you'll find this yourself when you do live streams, you're gonna have a relatively small number of people watching it live at any time, particularly when you start. Most of your views will come after the event. People see those videos after the event and watch them. So after we produce really compelling content, we're boosting that out to maximize that audience. And we've stayed away from just game drives. We have broadcast some game drives, but we're also finding alternative ways. Horse riding, we did a fantastic ride with rhinos at Olpegeta the other day. Walks, cultural interactions things that can get people outside of the vehicle and show them the variety of experiences that are possible here. And that's where we've seen most of the engagement. And we have seen engagement building, which is really encouraging, particularly people talking to us while we're streaming and asking questions. We've made sure we have excellent Kenyan guides in every location who can actually talk to their audience. Sorry, someone mute that. Please mute your mic. Please mute your mic. Uh, yeah, which has actually enabled us to have conversations and interestingly, not just with potentially travel, potential travelers, but even travel agents and tour operators have jumped into this conversation as well. We had a really fantastic engagement the other day with the last two Northern Whites um, at Old Pegida, where we had a lot of interest from the audience, a lot of great questions, and a lot of Kenyans that got involved in that conversation too, that weren't aware of how important those rhinos were. Um, and even young Kenyans asking how they can get work in the conservation field as well. Uh, we've gone beyond just wildlife. Uh, we've taught people how to make dawas. Um, we, if any of you saw, we did a workout session, a gym session with rangers. That was really popular, particularly with the local market. Horse riding, rock climbing, all kinds of adventure activities as well to take us beyond wildlife and show people what they can do when they, when they come to Kenya. So in addition to the live streams where we bring out these stories, we're also producing these professionally produced films. And I think it's really important, as Betty said, to really get people to connect to Kenya and to connect to the destination. So I'm gonna show you some of the films that we've been producing as we travel around after we live stream as well, where we're really aiming to bring stories to people and to connect them to Kenyans and to be able, for people to be able to connect with a Kenyan story. So let me start off with showing you one short film that we made in Samburu land. Um, with a camel safari operator where we've really shown the profile of a Kenyan working in tourism because part of the return of tourism is also supporting those people who depend on tourism for a living, but also getting them to tell their story about what they love about the destination. The best thing in being at camel walking safari is that this is like a paradise whereby you can enjoy all sorts of adventure. 
elephants, giraffe, the lions, and many other animals. And also it's part of exercise. I enjoy the camels because they are very friendly. They are very polite animals. They are just like human. And they are my friends. My name is Paul Shilingi. I work as a guide at Carizia Walking Safaris. So everywhere we go, in addition to doing the live streams or producing content like that. And that's a really compelling story that can be shared through KTB social media channels and used again and again for future campaigns, particularly to drive travel once people start traveling again. And that idea of showing people this idea of the magic awaits, being able to show them what awaits them when they come here, that the destination, as Betty said, we don't want to be overt about hygiene and preparedness. We just want to show them that these experiences are there and ready for them when they come. This was when we were in Navasha. We wanted to show people what they can expect if they come and travel to Navasha from a dusk till dawn, full day experience. So again, we're producing these films every couple of days. We have a full-time editor who's traveling with us, who's editing all of these on a computer that we have to set up in every location that we go to actually produce these films every, every couple of days. Um, and they'll be there for KDB to keep using as we move into the, the recovery phase and actually start driving travel. So it's about, as I said, more than just wildlife, as you can see. Anytime we get anywhere, we look for those stories and those little magical moments that we can capture. Uh, we're up in Mugi Conservancy in Lykipia, for example, and happened upon this this really delightful little story here. <laughs> Giraffes always reach for greater heights. Giraffes are very humble. Their quotes, some of them say that they are flawed. But you know what? They just embrace their flaws and that makes them very beautiful. In Kenya, we have three species of giraffes. We have the Maasai giraffes, we have the Rothschild giraffe, and we have the reticulated giraffe. Reticulated giraffes are endangered species in Kenya and all over the world. Tala is an orphaned reticulated giraffe that was found six years ago and was brought to Movie Conservancy. And she has been fed by Mama Tala. Tala really, really loves chapatis, and Mama Tala makes them best chapatis. Even if you're having a bad day, she'll always be there to hug you, kiss you, and that makes your day beautiful. When you come to Mugi, you'll receive lots and lots of hugs from Tala and lots of kisses. She loves visitors.
So what we're showing people is that these are the experiences that await you and not in an overt way, but showing them really compelling, engaging experience and things they'll remember and it will keep Kenya top of mind um, once they start thinking of traveling again. So the consistency of those daily live um, streams, which we're doing every single day, combined with every few days, these really powerful stories that we can communicate. So many of you are asking how you can get involved in this, um, how we can tell your story. The important thing is sharing this content and what we call co-opetition. This isn't about competition. It isn't about one person being favored or featured over another. We wanna share as much content as we can. And the more that you share of these live streams and this content that's produced, the better it is for the destination. As they say, a rising tide lifts all boats. And that's really important as we move forward to get the destination back on its feet and travel resumed again. So allowing your content to be aggregated is really important. What you're seeing here is the child of the content community project that we rolled out last October. If any of you attended the training events and sessions we did, which really got fast tracked by the rise of COVID, which is working with the industry to get this content together. So it's important when you post your social media content to use the magical Kenya hashtags and the magic awaits hashtag. That way we can see it when it's publicly posted and we can select the content that we want to use and we want to feature. If you're starting to use live streaming technology and a few people are trying this in Kenya, I've seen people, I know we've got some people this afternoon from Olpegeta, their sofa safaris and others who are doing it, who are gonna talk about it. That's great, but let us know that you're doing it. Put your notification out and make sure you use the hashtag in it so we can see when you're going live as well. And if you're producing consistently great streams, we can start sharing those too. And this really is what the content community project that we rolled out last October and are working through with KTB is all about. So let me just give you some pointers if you're gonna be moving into this space and also just for your own business as well as you look at re-engaging with an audience and getting travelers back. What content do you need online that works? Make it alive, show them something happening, not just static, not just showing some animals in terms of a view or a viewpoint, but get, a, as you saw some examples there, build a story into it whenever possible. Make it experiential, show what an experience is like for a traveler, as you saw there in the Navasha example. What is it like to spend a day there in that place? Uh, what kind of activities do you have? And show those human stories, particularly those real Kenyan stories, as you saw there from guides, from people who work with tourists who are ready to welcome people back and waiting for the return of business. Keep it varied, don't post the same thing every day. Be as imaginative and creative as you can. Your cooking classes, you're showing them how to make cocktails, taking them on a walk, doing an interview or a conversation. People are very interested in conservation um, and those positive stories. We did an interview just today on our live stream with someone from the Big Life Project here in Kimana who are working with communities to support wildlife corridors into Amboseli. And try and put them in context, the content. Don't just show them an elephant. Show the elephant in the context of a visit experience. How will they see them? Where are those elephants? How, what sort of safaris or options do you have to see them? And how can they play a part in protecting that elephant? That's the sort of positive content people respond to. What should you avoid and doesn't work? Bad quality content. I was gonna take you shortly through some cameras and devices you can use beyond your phone, but obviously it need, we need a certain level of quality um, in content not just static unmoving subjects and views, content with no context or connection to an actual guest or visitor experience, or equally unrealistic content showing things that no visitor could ever experience. Make sure that it is a legitimate experience that you're showing. Don't be offensive. Some people say, well, of course, I, I would never be offensive, but think about it. The other day, we got some incredible footage of some um, African wild dogs in Laikipia. Absolutely amazing footage, which we're gonna release as an edited story. We didn't stream it live. Why? Because we were spent an evening and a morning with a pack of, of, of um, African wild dogs and anyone who knows that species know what they do when they're active, which is a lot of hunting. And in the time we were with them, we saw them kill 12 dick dicks. If we had live streamed that, we would have upset a lot of people. So think about appropriacy as well, particularly when it comes to animal behavior. Do not show them killing each other, simple as that. Uh, we all know lion kills and things are exciting sometimes for guests, but think about a broad global audience when you're broadcasting this stuff. Also critical, and this is true of why we're here at the moment in Amboseli, people say, well, you're gonna show the big tuskers. Yes, we are, but not live. Why? Because we do not wanna broadcast the live location of those elephants, because there's obviously a poaching risk. If we show a live video showing the exact location of where that animal is at a given time, someone watching that could use that as a reference point to find that animal. So think about things like that as well, if you're working with endangered species or areas with those critically endangered species. 
film them, record them, post them in your Instagram stories or your social media posts, but not live with those critically endangered species. Make sure any person that appears in it has given you permission for them to appear online. Don't put, go posting people without their permission. That can be a legal issue that comes back to haunt you later. So let me just give you some advice and run through some of the channels you should be using for your business and where we can pick up your content. The majority of content we're seeing in terms of activity at the moment, particularly people looking for travel content, is social media, of course. As Betty said, you know, TV advertising is something of the past. Everyone's watching Netflix, and I can guarantee you none of you are seeing any ads when you're watching Netflix because they don't have ad models. You might be watching the news and CNN, but do you really want to advertise in that negative media space um, when you've got a free platform um, when it comes to social media? Facebook, popular as ever, particularly with that critical generation of travelers um, of Generation X, um, who, who are an important travel audience. It's their platform of choice. And Facebook Live as a platform to live stream your content. Instagram for your millennial audiences and IGTV for storing the live streams that you do on Instagram as well. YouTube, to some extent, YouTube Live, not a popular, particularly popular platform, but YouTube as a repository for your content is important. TripAdvisor, media and PR, and shareable content, and live content within the limits it is for you to, to, to do that. Let's quickly run through them. Facebook and Facebook Live, Facebook Watch is the strongest audience for our traditional markets for Kenya, those slightly older travelers. We also need to be aware that those plus 65 travelers are probably less, much less likely to travel than they were before. So we're concentrating on those people in the kind of uh, 35 to 50 mark where Facebook is a great a platform for them. It's very visually driven. It's about photos. It's about video updates about what's happening now, keeping that connection there, telling them when you'll be ready to receive visitors, same way you'd stay in touch with family and friends. And for now, it's about promoting engagement, getting them to keep following, getting them to keep liking, to watching your live videos, liking your posts, rather than trying to convert them to travel. Build up that audience, and then you can convert them once the restrictions are lifted. Instagram is strongest platform for our millennial markets, who are gonna probably be one of our strongest new markets as this new normal established itself. Uh, in travel, particularly with the loss of those older travelers as, as a potential market. It's 100% visual. Don't just put photos into Instagram, focus on those Instagram stories every single day. Extremely popular, those little 15 second pieces of content are easy to produce. Just keep reminding them what you have to offer and the magic that awaits them in Kenya. Keep those connections going. Use live when you can on Instagram. It's not as popular as the stories and things, but it's becoming more popular mainly through IGTV. Instagram TV, where you can store your live streams. As soon as you do a live broadcast on Instagram, you can select to save that to Instagram TV, and you should do. It's obviously strictly phone-based as well. So with your live content, it does get a lot of, of um, PR value when you're doing this. The media does love it. Um, the engagement tends to be immediate on the live streams, less engagement after the event, but more views after you stream. So as we say, upfront engagement and then long-term views. You can broadcast on these platforms like Facebook Live for up to 90 minutes. But as I said, it's really unlikely how many people would sit through all of that. But you will have people that jump in and out. But equally, short, interesting, storified, and engaging content is just as good and just as powerful, particularly when it's saved and you then boost and promote that. Pre-publicize it as much as you can where possible. I know Alpegid will be speaking soon about their sofa safaris, which they schedule with every, every, every week, but also it can be difficult to exactly say an exact time when you'll be online, particularly if you're working with wildlife because animals don't keep appointments. And because you've told your audience that you're gonna be showing them a lion at midday, doesn't mean that lion's gonna be there. Um, so use timeframes, this morning or this afternoon, we'll be going into this area or, or, or looking for this particular species or holding this event or experience. YouTube focus on more as a channel to store your content. Think about Netflix. That's the way people are using it. They're going in there, they're searching for videos and they're watching them. So the videos that you post on those other platforms, store them on YouTube. Push a subscription to your channel and think about mobile because that's where most people are now watching their YouTube content. TripAdvisor, not very important at the moment because obviously not a lot of people are writing reviews right now because no one's traveling, but don't count them out because once travel resumes, those reviews are going to be critical for people making decisions about where they travel. And they're going to go back and use those reviews as much as they did before to make those decisions. So reviews and testimonials are still critically important. So in terms of the practicalities of your content, this is the most common question I get asked. How do I shoot these videos that I post? Should it be landscape or should it be portrait? Should I be turning my phone on the side or should I be holding it upright? 
more and more phone operators want people to shoot those vertical videos as opposed to horizontal, but generally shooting in landscape for Facebook is the best approach to take if you're doing Facebook live and Instagram always um, go, go for portrait. Um, it, it justifies much better to the Instagram frame um, and your previews that are posted on IGTV will not be wrongly aligned as they are if you shoot them in, in landscape. So here's just some general advice about tools you can use if you want to start producing content yourself and sharing it online that ideally we can access. Many of you will be producing content on your phone, which is fine, but be aware of the camera quality of your phone. Try and use a phone that has a good quality camera and can produce a good quality image. I'm not here to sell phones, so I'm not going to give you brand over brand comparison, but you probably know the phones that have better cameras than others. So whichever the phones you have available in your business, choose the one with the best camera, obviously. The real enemy of good streamed content and good live content and phone based video is camera shake. Horrible shaky images when you're in the back of a safari vehicle, particularly and your camera's bouncing up and down. And that's where you wanna use a technology known as a gimbal, which is a motorized device, which can actually hold your phone or your camera steady and stop it from bouncing around. Now there's several versions of these. There are very large scale professional ones made by DJI who make drones um, which will hold a professional camera then there are ones that will hold a phone where you actually place your phone within the device i'm going to show you one in just a minute then there's another version which actually has the camera built into the gimbal so you bluetooth it to your phone it produces your content um, and you stream that directly to, to your phone via bluetooth the other great enemy we have, of course, is sound. Any of you that has do have done live and worked particularly with a phone will be familiar with wind burn. When you've got a microphone turned on, you hear a lot of rumbling as the wind goes across those microphones. It's a very hard thing to avoid. There are some devices made that muffle speakers, but we've been experimenting with some of them and find that they actually don't work terribly well. One option is to use a microphone. Um, one that's either in the ear, like a Bluetooth uh, microphone that people use for phones um, that they can speak into, or a Bluetooth mic that clips onto their clothing. One of the challenges is that if you're working with platforms like Instagram Live, for example, is that often they don't work and they actually won't carry the sound into your feed. They want it to come specifically from the phone. So that wind burn is a challenge you're gonna have to learn to overcome. Uh, generally using your hand as a windbreak is the simplest way to do it by holding your hand in front of, just in front of the microphone to block that wind burn. You then wanna be able to edit ideally, so you're not just showing raw video if you wanna share some stories later. There's lots of good phone editing based editing apps out there now, iMovie, for example, Videorama, there's many out there if you search for that will help you be able to edit your video, add music, make it look, look more professional and be able to share it much more readily. I'm just gonna come out of my presentation again. Um, Paul, can we go back to the screen sharing again? Because I just wanna show you some of these devices. If we can get me back. So I'll show you a little bit of what we were, what we were talking about just then, uh, particularly when it comes to the steadying of your camera. So if you're a real professional, <laughs> um, this would be a gimbal. This is what we've been using. Um, and as you can see, it's a very large motorized rig, but also a very expensive uh, tool. Unless you're a serious photographer or working with serious photographers, it's doubtful you would use a gimbal of this size and expense, but that's the ultimate almost cinema quality version. Uh, that we'd be using. Just, Wycliffe, can you help me? For those of you who are watching our, our live streams, you will have seen Wycliffe, who is one of our guides that's working with us, who's been doing an excellent job keeping people from the destination. You want to say hi? Hello. You need hi, to come everyone. lower. Hello. <laughs> Wycliffe, you want to just take that one for me? Thank you. I'm going to take that one over there. Okay, so for your phone, there's a much smaller and more affordable version. This will cost you about $150. Uh, again, it's made by DJ, DJI who make drones. You just clamp your phone into this device and turn it on. And as you'll see there, it immediately turns your phone into a gimbaled function. You can control the movement of your phone using a joystick functionality here. You can switch from portrait to landscape and that will eliminate all camera shake from your photography. Keep it steady keep it smooth and a much more professional look from your camera phone, from your phone footage. Thanks for that. You also have the version here. That one's called an Osmo. This is called an Osmo Pocket. So this basically has the camera built into the gimbal. 
So you can shoot and it will stream directly to your phone. These guys go for about $250, $300. One of the problems with these is that Instagram, again, does not allow you to stream straight from one of these guys straight into Instagram. So you'll need to go back to the phone. Instagram are very protective of that, that, that phone usage. Thanks. Uh, if we can go back to my presentation. So just to wrap up, um, as I've shown you, and I think you, everyone is now learning how important digital is now when it comes to staying engaged with clients. Digital really has to be our first priority. There's one thing this period of isolation's done. It's killed off a lot of that old school um, media. People we used to say that weren't online, that weren't digital natives, now pretty much are, because they've spent three months depending on the internet, watching Netflix, shopping on Amazon. The digitally native population has really expanded even more through what we've seen. Social media is absolutely critical. And what we need to focus on now is retaining engagement with those past travelers, trying to get some of them back, and building engagement with new travelers by posting and sharing lots of content um, out there. Focus on propensity to travel. Who are those people who are likely to travel? Those adventurous people, those people who have not enjoyed lockdown, that are desperate to get out there, that are less likely to be concerned and have fears um, about their health when they travel, that are younger, healthier, um, and in those low risk categories. Think about what sort of experiences appeal to them. It is the outdoors, it is adventure. Um, it is more ethical travel. Produce that visual content, go for high quality content over quantity and impact over duration. Try and get people to respond and engage with that content as much as you can. So on that note, I hope that was useful. I hope you've seen um, what we've been doing with this project. As I said, we're gonna be continuing to do this through to the next, um, until the end of July, uh, possibly beyond as well. Um, we're gonna be producing this content every single day um, and, 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 and sharing these stories please follow them, please share them um, whenever you can to your, to your accounts and your followers um, and start producing your own content. Get it out there, hashtag it, use those hashtags, Magical Kenya um, and, and the Magic Await so that we can see it, we can find it and we can start telling your stories as well. So on that note, I'll hand back to Mohammed, and I thank you. Wow, wow, Damien, and uh, applause for you, man. Uh, we can never get tired listening to you. And uh, thank you very much, Damien, for that uh, insightful presentation, all the way from somewhere in Amboseli. You make it look so easy. And I just hope that we are learning from it and we proceed, you know, we, 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 you know, we take it up from there as a different business. I think one of the things that I've, not, I've taken note is it, we are no longer talking of competition. Competition. You know, uh, 1.5 billion travelers. What is the share of Kenya? What's the share of Africa? It's almost nothing. So ladies and gentlemen, I think there's more out there for us. And one other thing that I also picked up is about connecting with emotions. You know, for the first time, uh, camel, you know, I'm a pastoralist, so I love animals. And somebody's describing a camel as polite. I've never had that description before. Another one is describing giraffe as humble. I think those are very, very good description. And as you said, just not taking a picture of an animal like this here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please help us trend because we are talking about digital space. For the next one hour, let's make this one trend. And our hashtag is, there we go. Let me, uh, I did uh, share it earlier. Magical, and I'll get it for you, just a sec. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce the next panelist, who is Mark Kaigua. Mike is the founder of Nendo. He's going to tell you more. What is Nendo? Who is Nendo? And the little I researched about Mark, there's a beautiful quote he has on his bio, which says, after cash, after mobile money, and airtime, megabytes, are the most important currency of the digital economy. And Mark is one of us right here in Kenya. The hashtag, ladies and gentlemen, is making digital work 254. 254 is, of course, Kenya. So Mark, now we are in good hands. 
and Mark is going to take us through following Damien's presentation. He's going to tell us why is it important, what are the benefits of doing business in the digital space? We don't expect you as MDs, as general managers, to run your social media, but you must have commitment from the top for the guys who are doing it at the bottom to succeed. Mark, very well. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed and uh, Damien, that was uh, outstanding and uh, thanks for that. And um, yeah, Betty, thank you for the invitation and the opening remarks. Um, so with that said, yes, uh, welcome uh, for those of you again who've joined a little as we've been going along the way. And uh, I think Damien has done such a, such a great job. So I, I, um, I'm actually going to just uh, shift gears a bit in a, in a great way because I think you've emphasized a lot of, of what I would have wanted to, to add to. I think let's, uh, when we're thinking about digital, let's start with the question of how do travelers uh, choose a destination and how do they select and start what we call the customer journey, right? So from uh, when they first begin, it'll often begin with a Google search um, or it'll begin sometimes with an advertisement that they see somewhere. And that draws their attention typically towards a web page, and and they start the the awareness phase, right? Okay, I've never been to Africa, but this safari sounds interesting. So that word also safari, and this phrase magical Kenya, just like Damien has emphasized, those are really really key terms. And I think for me, when I when I think about that, what my, my team and I uh, do at Nendo is we look at uh, at at what we call public data. So we look at you know what are Kenyans talking about on social media, or just really Africans or anyone on Facebook, Twitter, elsewhere, and how do we use that to make strategic decisions? So allocating budgets or um, uh, just, just adapting our web experiences to, uh, to, to, to deliver sales. And uh, just the, the first area I wanted to take a look at and I asked my, my, uh, my team to look with me was at the word safari. And so it's who owns this word in terms of mind share right now during COVID. And if we look at the last year, it's actually been, um, I think uh, Namibia, which has been uh, first in terms of that phrase, followed by Botswana, um, and then Kenya and, and Tanzania um, and, and South Africa are really there also uh, frequently um, engaging and, and, and being mentioned there. Now, why do I start with that? Because in this time of COVID-19, this isn't just an economic recession. This is a humanitarian, social, even almost political and health uh, crisis. And so it, it asks us uh, for a very, very new uh, approach towards thinking and maybe even leaving behind what was business as usual. You know, we can't travel or engage much the same way we did before. Now, the reason I start with that word safari is for you to also ask yourself, when it comes to our website as a destination or as a travel agent or wherever you are on, on our webinar, what is it that you own or you want to compete for? Because this is the time to do housekeeping, right? It could have been that you were able to just keep a steady flow of travelers and visitors and just over time you got familiar or used to that. This is the time to go back and say, you know what? Our website is actually our most important employee. They work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They are the first impression. They're giving that handshake, giving that valuable information. And, and they are due for, uh, you know, in some cases, sprucing up. And, and it could be that you describe a bit of what it means to, 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 to engage with you during COVID, or you tell some of the stories that Damien has just shown, and you explain a bit of how you're catering for your staff and really just for your, your operations. And so if you have been affected, tell people or explain it. And part of the reason I, I think you should consider doing this is um, one, one particular approach that, that has struck me is, and, and it's very in line because Damien mentioned it in one of his bullet points, I think the fact that you have several years worth of previous travelers is a, is a deep asset for you to, to take advantage of. You have email addresses, you potentially have phone numbers, and you have contacts of people who have come to you and had a very pleasant and memorable experience. Some of them are philanthropists. Some of them are you know, at the upper ends of the socioeconomic ladder in their respective countries, as humble as they may have seen maybe when they came to travel with you. And this is the time to appeal to them and say, you know what, we are a destination that you came to years ago, and here's some ways you can support us during COVID-19. And tell your story as, as the owner, as the, I mean, in addition to what Damien shared, which is more of, you know, entice and, and, and attract people and keep them, you have them keep the destination top of mind. The why for digital is that you get to strike up this sort of relationship. And if you've had, let's say, several hundred travelers, I'm not talking about talking about 
you know, meeting, engaging hundreds of people, but there could be a list of 10. And those 10 may be prepared to engage your organization and provide you, let me not call it a, you know, like a recurring donation or anything like that, but a contribution towards your sustainability. They care about your mission. They care about sometimes the conservation. They care about the fact that you need to last. And if you have a mission or higher purpose, in addition to conserving um, nature and the environment, that can also appeal to them. And I think for me, this, this particular concept, uh, one of the ways that, um, you know, just brainstorming with my team ahead of this was, uh, you know, even this idea that, that ask people who aren't intending to travel, that one way to support you is to buy a room night a month. Um, and, and again, you know, you're not actually expect them to come in here and stay, but what you're saying is, hey, provide us this um, actual cash upfront and you can potentially redeem it for future nights, and, you know, later on. Because what you're trying to do here is just uh, create a pipeline of sustainability here for yourself. Um, in addition to that, I think the, the, the website, as I said, that's going to be a key platform for you to describe your, what makes you different, what makes you special. Then social media is where you tell your story on a regular and ongoing basis. Show people exactly as Damon has encouraged us, uh, what it means to be part of your, your team and with your guides or just uh, what it's like to serve alongside you. One area, because it can be intimidating, right, to get started, to get consistent, to do quality content on a frequent basis. I tend to find that, that destinations don't look for all the people. Remember, I've said a lot of this is about the past. There have been, let's say, hundreds, if not thousands of travelers who've come to your destination over the last couple of years. Many of them have taken a selfie. Some have gone further and taken some outstanding photographs on your location, on your property. So what user-generated content here says is go to your Instagram, go to your pin, and you don't have to necessarily create new content. Of course, I think what David is saying is, is we're encouraging you to do that. But look back, and your content calendar could be filled with you looking back and saying, look, there was a filmmaker who visited us in February of 2019 and did an outstanding video. It's on YouTube, it's on his Instagram, and he tagged our location. Now, we're going to cut that into several bits. And here we have high production values shot on our location and our property by someone and put on a public platform. And if you want, of course, you can ask for some consent. Typically, a DM is fine. But when they tag your location, what is fair use is for you to republish it and give them credit. Don't take the credit. Don't deny them the little mention to say photo by so-and-so. But many of these people will have large followings. And you're reminding them that they visited you, had a great experience, and you're saving yourself in a way um, content that you, if you had to kind of create several days of content, you're always looking back to get some of the best performing content from these large influencers and attracting them back, reminding them, helping them to reminisce about what it was like to visit your, uh, your, your location. I think um, the other one, I think with, uh, just as we heard for um, uh, just all the channels to share, I find it's for Kenya. So perhaps it's for local uh, tourism. But you would be surprised, uh, many of us will spend more time on WhatsApp than we've been planning to recently. It's just keeping up with messages and friends and family. But you may have seen WhatsApp status. And I think that's a kind of slept on or a bit of an ignored platform where you get the chance to bring the same content you were doing on your Instagram or Facebook and bringing it there. Now here, what you're tapping into is your list of contacts. Some of you have been building up thousands of contacts in your address book. And maybe you've never even used WhatsApp status. And you as you know, an MD and owner, like you might not create the, the content of the day, but tapping into that network creates just some of the day-to-day -day contact for people and encourages them that, you know, when you're in the field, you're still around and hear some of the sights and sounds of how they can keep up with you. Uh, of course, there it's important to keep it very, very short, but that would be something worth, worth looking into. And then for digital business generally, because of the amount of time we're spending online, it is a bit harder to stand out. So I'd encourage you, if you do have the resources, you heard Damien mention the word boosting. Now, this word is not to be taken lightly. You can create a beautiful cathedral, but if it's in the middle of the desert and no one can see it and walk into it, it would be a shame. The content you create deserves a little extra resources. Now, I'm telling you to spend as little as 200 shillings a day. Some of you are a bit endowed and you can spend a bit more than that. But this is what allows you to get an extra bit of uh, just a, 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 you know, basically wind beneath your wings. So the way that Facebook and Instagram and some of these platforms will work is they don't, owe, you, you might have built up a million people on your platform or 100,000, even 1,000. They don't always allow you to reach your full audience. Because of the volume of content you're competing with from everywhere under the sun, you have to pay typically a little bit to get to even your own audience 
let alone others. So keep this in mind. And I'd encourage you just to experiment with that. I'd encourage your you know, e-commerce or communications officers or your digital marketing people on your staff to, to just get familiar with what it's like to spend. Um, and as I'm saying, start with a very small amount. You're just boosting to, as I'm saying, 200 shillings a day. Um, or, you know, obviously you can go up to, to 1,000 shillings a day or more, depending on how frequently you publish. But I'll encourage you that. Because as Damien said, you're likely to see small um, numbers now. And don't let that discourage you. That's the other thing. I think people do it a week and they say, ah, these numbers are not good enough. You know, let's, let's shut the whole thing down. Even Mohammed will tell you his whole Twitter, uh, you know, account. It, it was built follower by follower, <laughs> one day at a time. And, and so whether that's an institution or an individual, I really want to encourage you, 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 don't, you, won't, you won't snap your fingers and, 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 you know, build this overnight. You build it also uh, by, by getting more familiar and more practice. And so I also want to say, be forgiving of yourself. Sometimes you hear content, you see the equipment of Damien, you say, can I do that? we well, would be surprised. This is actually the time a lot of people are teaching themselves and going online and digital is the way. So if we're looking at your website, if we're looking at the search terms that you rank for, um, if we're looking at the content that previous travelers have created, these are some of the areas I'm encouraging you to go. And then lastly, if you consider spending just a little bit to boost what you do create, you'll actually get that extra uh, bit of, uh, of, um, of, of experience. I mean, sometimes we, we think it's only big cat diaries who can come and give a nice little audio track for a video. Some of you are seeing great things in the wild and, and, and you'd be surprised. It's just your, you and your guide or just you and, and somebody from your, your destination that can share an intimate and very simple story. And so I just want to encourage you that practice it and try this out and tell people about the sustainability of your operation. Are you testing staff? Are you, um, you know, helping them uh, to maintain their livelihoods. And that you'd be surprised by that purpose, looking back at that one traveler from Sweden, that wealthy individual from Germany, that's someone else from, from around the way, they might not travel for another couple of years, but that's not to say they couldn't find a way to support you if you invite them. And that might do more because at the end of the day, we're looking at cash and just you know seeing this, this period of time out. Uh, so I'll encourage you, you have this list of contacts. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out with a message about your institution, the experience they had and what they can do to support you at this time. Um, I think that's that's a particular area in addition to your content creation that can help you see out this period. So yeah, so if I'm to sum it up and hand it back to you, Mohammed, I would just say for the website, this is the time to do the refresh. Um, make it look good. It's your employee number one, working tirelessly, even as I talk, I can visit all your websites and see a bit about you. Um, secondly, is for your social media, you don't have to take on the burden of creating the content now. Please do, that's what Damien encouraged, but look back. Smart people, video professionals have come with big equipment on your property and tagged you in it. You just gotta look back to find it and you can, you can make that a regular thing that you post and share. Um, and then yes, I think for your uh, you know, online platforms, I'd, I'd encourage you to, to consider either this, this membership approach or whatever with recurring destinations. And, and yeah, if you can spend something small to, to promote even whatever you do create, be forgiving of yourself and take it a day at a time. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and really encouraged by what KTB is, is doing and I'm happy to be here. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Damien. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Betty. Oh, Mark, coming right after Damien. What a fantastic presentation. And all the attendees here, great comments. We appreciate all that. But we have a forum for Q&A. We encourage you, please, um, tell us, ask us questions, and direct it to whoever you want in the panels. And then we will take some time towards the end uh, to answer some of the questions. We'll try as much as possible to answer as much as we can. So once again, Mark, thank you very much. Mark told us about Safari and the way Namibia actually owned Safari in 2010. They don't even speak Swahili, but Safari is, the, you know, they took it. Kenya doesn't appear anywhere. Yet, Kenyans, we are very strong on social media. If we want to take even head on CNN, we do that. We are not short of KOTs and uh, social media enthusiasts in Kenya. I think as tourism players, Betty, Daksari, that is something we need to do to bring these Kenyans in the social media uh, to try and help us so that we can regain back our safari because that's a Swahili name and the Kenyan name at the end of the day. And number two, the other day someone asked me, you keep on asking for more money for KTB. Why do you need more money? Because digital is not that expensive. And Mark answered it and said, 
you need to boost. Just posting is not enough. It's certainly better and cheaper slightly than TV, but you waste a lot of your time and money on TV channels. However, we must boost, optimize from as low as $2, whatever you can afford. So to the general managers and MD on this forum, please, when you start cutting down, the first thing you hit is normally training and marketing. Don't do that because you're hitting yourself hard. Let's shift gears. Once again, I remind you, our hashtag, making digital work 254. Making digital work 254. Now, Damien has taken through us all this. Mark has explained so much as well. And Dr. Terry Betty has also done so much. Do we have any testimonials? Do we have any experience in Kenya? People would like to share what they've done for themselves and for their organizations. And this is now evening. We'll each give five minutes and we'll be starting off with Angama Mara. Angama has been actively keeping their online audience abreast of what's going on in the Mara, with the impressive safari highlights, engaging their online community with wildlife at the Mara. And when they sell Mara, remember they're selling Kenya. In addition to this, Angama has been a key contributor to the Today in the Destination series currently being run by Kenya Tourism Board. And Kenya Tourism Board is always reminding us, please share the content. Please share stuff that you've taken. Damien has clearly said, don't be fixated with so much of the live coverage because also we want to protect some of these endangered species. But on the other side, whatever you've recorded, please share. And KTB will be more than happy to help you. Their photography competition, the greatest Masai Mara began in 2018, inviting wildlife enthusiasts, travelers to the Mara to showcase what they've experienced. That has been a huge success. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Angama Mara, Karibu Angama Mara. Thank you. Thanks so much. Can you, can you, can you hear me? Loud and clear. You've got me. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Good afternoon, and, and thank you for the opportunity to, to speak here. Um, very interesting platform. Basically, my, my name's Adam. I run all the photography, a lot of the marketing here at Ngama Mara on the escarpment on the western side of the Maasai Mara. But without any guests, my job has shifted towards content creation. We started um, before the lockdown, actually, in, in March. We started with this idea that we knew that people were going to be struggling to travel. And so they wanted to stay engaged. And so we produced, started producing daily, well, near daily. We produced six a week to give myself the Sunday off. Um, but we, um, we wanted to stay relevant. And not just Angama, we wanted the Maasai Mara to stay relevant. We wanted people to think when they can travel, what's top of their mind, what's in the forefront of their mind. And that hopefully will be coming back to the Maasai Mara, coming to Kenya, ideally Angama, but it doesn't need to be. We've taken this on board as being our, our role to, to market the Maasai Mara as a whole. So we set up these, these videos. Um, we aimed to try and do the one to two minute video every single day. And we tried to diversify our content. Obviously the focus is on wildlife because we're in the Maasai Mara, but we also wanted to share that human element to things. So a lot of our videos, probably every third or fourth video is a human story. We wanted them to be engaging. We wanted them to be quite funny because we realized that people, um, a lot of people around the world are a little bit depressed. They're a little bit sad about the current situation. And so instead of diving into the, 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 the depths of thing and getting too informative, we decided to play it quite light. So there's a lot of videos of us getting stuck because of all the rain. There's a lot of videos of us just messing around, doing cool things, trying to show people that the Maasai Mara is a fun spot. The Maasai Mara is still here. And Gama is still looking good. We've got a team of 30 people here. We're still maintaining it. Security is good. So we could open tomorrow. We're ready, we're ready for business. And these videos are our little way of showing people that we're ready for business. So they could, I could really talk for ages, but I thought what I would rather do is actually show you an example of a video um, that we post every day on our Instagram and our Facebook channel. So let me try and do this through the share screen here. And I'm going to show you just a... A funny one about an elephant. So hopefully you can hear this. So most of our game drive this morning has been spent going backwards. Thanks to this big guy. A few weeks ago we showed a clip of an elephant sleeping in the middle of the road. Big large bull. This is, this is the same male. 
we thought we would try out the GoPro on the ground. I must admit, I was rather nervous when he came right up to it. He tossed the camera around. Unfortunately, he didn't stand on it. He casually walked away. There was no way we could get anywhere close to that camera. With this guy on the road, there's no going forward. Fortunately, the Mara Triangle road team picked it up a few hours later, and this brought much laughter to all. So there, there's an example of one. And that's obviously a more of a wildlife kind of themed one. But I thought I would share one more just so I've got enough time just to show one more. And this is more of a human, a human aspect to it. So let's, let's go for another one. And you'll get an idea of the diversity of which we, we're trying to cover. So last week you taught me how to jump. And this week I'm going to teach you how to play golf. The first thing is how to hold the club. So we only have five balls, the grass is long and if we lose them that's the end of the game. So there we go. So to date, we've produced almost a hundred of these. Um, so we keep the creative juices flowing. Uh, and yeah, you're welcome to follow in on the journey as well. And we try and keep you updated on what's happening on this part of the Maasai Mara. Oh, thank you, Adam, for showing that it can be done right in the Mara. And we can see the next Tiger Woods in the Mecca. Yeah, for sure. right in the heart of Mara. Ladies and gentlemen, keep asking your questions and we are taking note of them and we'll be able to answer them. Uh, Damien, you have a couple of them, and uh, also for Mark, you have a couple of questions for you as well. We'll be answering them in a short while. Now, next testimonial. We always talk about domestic tourism, regional tourism. When we say about recovery, we've been reminded that fast to recover is domestic, not only in Kenya, but globally. Everybody's being told, travel within your own country. Then start looking outside because even your own country will not allow you to leave fast. They want you to travel within your country because of COVID, it's the new normal. In that regard, we have our own again who have managed to get space for themselves in the domestic travel. And this evening, we'd like to present to you TANAP Travel. TANAP Travel is a new age tour operator, very innovative travel agency at the forefront of disrupting tourism in Kenya by organizing themed experiences for organized groups and individual travelers. This is a gentleman that we follow each other on Twitter. We've been engaging, we've never met, but 
There's a lot of in common. We have Pomodori, Kinyamka. These are ladies and gentlemen who have come together to do something different, and they have their space today when it comes to tourism in Kenya. The other day when I was asked, do you guys value domestic tourism? And my answer was very simple. We did that over 10 years ago. That's no longer a question, and domestic tourism has its place. At this moment, please put your hands together for Mudori and Tana Putrafo. Thank you so much. All right, um, I think my, our journey has, has, as always, it's an interesting one because um, I wasn't working in tourism, but I did a campaign uh, for Kenya Tourism Board in 2016, and that's how kind I branched into, into the travel space and, and started a business. So it starts there. It starts, I think, with digital, and it starts at around this time because we were doing a great migration, social media takeover for KTB back then. And um, the idea was to bring content creators local uh, and, and go around the country um, showcasing the beauty, showcasing uh, some of the niche experiences um, that people could do. And all this was served and delivered to various audiences on digital. Uh, so it's almost full circle, I think, you know, now on the other side, uh, still doing the same, but now as a business. Uh, so Turn Up Travel is a bit diverse. Uh, so we have um, the two operator arm of the business, which as Mohammed has said, does mostly um, deemed experiences for new age travelers, millennials, and all that. But then we have a content production side because we realized when we talk about, you know, why are Kenyans not heading a particular direct direction or why are people not doing certain things, it came back to people don't know about these places, people don't hear about them, you know, um, consistently. Uh, so they are good places, but then they are not discoverable. So we, we, we sort of, I think, now approach it end to end from uh, mapping, of course, the attractions with the product owners to presenting them, of course, across digital channels. And then on the other side, then package them and, you know, get people across to, to, to experience that. Now, um, we also have a, a side of our business called Turn Up For Good, which has been right now during COVID helping the hospitality industry. Um, we're working with the Good Earth Group um, and they are doing Mama to the Rescue. Uh, so what we are supporting them with is photography, videography, and social media to support their fundraising campaign. And they are, they, what they are doing is delivering um, hot meals every day to the frontline workers and the needy in the community. Uh, the second thing we've always done is, I think I look at our real estate being online. So we never had to stop working or we never had to, you know, like just because we are now working from home, you know, sort of I think what Mark was saying is we just continued, you know, we reallocated resources. We never had to fire people. We are pretty small team, but so what we did is, you know, it, it's the same way you turn your rooms every other week or daily after, 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 after a guest checks out. So I think for us, that's our approach when it comes to our channel. So we've been producing and releasing content, um, focusing especially on nascent destinations from Chalbi Desert, Lake Baringo, you know, getting people are still, you know, dreaming. People are looking forward to stepping out. People are thinking about where they are going. And so it's a consistent conversation. So for oh, I think you are breaking and uh, we're running short of time as well. And uh, Maduri, you there? Okay, uh, we'll be able to get back with Uri once we get any question for him. But at this point, allow me very quickly now to bring our last testimony, which is spot on, which is another tour travel company, and they should be able to share with us. And you've got less than three minutes to take us through this. Spot on, over to you. Yes, yes, hi. Hi, hi. 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 Yes. hi. how are you? Very good, thank you. Yeah, so um, thank you so much for this forum. We don't take it for granted. and. Uh, we are, we are in a situation where we never foresaw in the tourism fraternity. But now what we are trying to, as Port on Vacations, what we are trying to do is uh, be able to showcase <coughs> the domestic tourism in a different manner. Uh, what I need to say, because I don't want to repeat All right, myself. Okay. 
uh, uh, Mark, we are proceed now with Mike. I will come back to you later. Mike, uh, proceed. Spot on. Okay, so, so what I was saying, like, uh, I don't want to repeat most of the panelists what they have said, but maybe I can be able to give some uh, guidelines to my fellow operators. Like, at the moment, what we are facing, uh, this challenge for COVID, is something which is we, didn't, we never expected to start with. And as a company, what you need to do is not to stop ma doing marketing. That's what the first thing what people have done. They have stopped doing marketing. So as spot on what we thought about the digital platform is like we thought like how do we how will be able to sustain domestic tourism in this time of COVID. So we introduced what well, the first people did the Nairobi National Park tour, which now I'm sure most of the operators are, are doing it at the moment. So we need also other operators to think outside the box in terms of what can we do in terms of domestic tourism so that we can grow other areas. In, but the digital world is the best way you can be able to grow your company. We have Facebook, we have Twitter, Instagram, even, even companies you can be able to put your company on uh, TikTok, you, you understand? And also even the mice, the mice business, as long as you're able to package it properly, Packaging is the most important on how you can be able to, how do you sell the product to the people? You understand? Some people nowadays, they try to copy what somebody X is doing and versus somebody Y, what they are doing. What you need to do is package your product nicely. How do, what language are you speaking to your client? What is the target market are you doing to your client? This is the right time to keep marketing as, as domestic trends because most of the people, we have like almost, 8.2 million users on social media and 7.2 of them use phones. So most of the people are online. This is, the, this is not the time to stop marketing your company. This is the time to push your product so that it might be known. People will, the COVID will, will be gone long, very shortly, it will, it will no longer be there. So people will be able to remember your brand. People will be able to appreciate the work you're doing. So um, I appreciate those people are doing the European National Park and other areas because domestic tourism is the, is the opening, that, that's where the, our recovery, tourism recovery will come from. So we, we have to keep uh, doing the digital work. Those, I normally see people, people doing um, like Instagram. People are not doing, most companies, they're not on Instagram. So Instagram is one of the most active platform that you can be able to get your clients from and the most age is between 25 to 40 so you need to package products that are able to relate to them speak to their language and they're able to come to you and book for, for your vacation so guys because of time i don't want don't stop marketing this is the right time to push thank you thank you thank you mike uh, i think uh, yeah you've done well and uh, thank you very much for coming uh, you know to the you know to the forum we appreciate very much and uh, yes uh, we agree with you is exactly what Damien was saying instagram uh, facebook twitter uh, very key and uh, uh, attendees please take the contacts uh, of everyone here so that uh, we are able to interact and yes again don't cut the budget for marketing that's that's very key ladies and gentlemen we will have a very quick um, poll that we are carrying out. It will take you less than a minute. If you find time, kindly answer that, and we'll be able to share with you the results. What online marketing tools do you use? You have a dedicated digital marketing team, and the million dollar question, how often do you engage online? Please do that. Meanwhile, let's now quickly go through the questions and answers. And we have quite a couple. And I'll start with the last one from my good friend, Jim Shamon. Jim says, we know that film tourism is one of the fastest growing segments in tourism globally. More often than not, you travel to a place when you've seen it in a film, right? And he says, as seen by the Lord of the Rings, Game of the Thrones, etc., why have KTB? And other players have been so reluctant to engage us on this. We could have done a lot more with Lion King, which was based on Kenyan geography. So, Betty, that will be for you. And then uh, Lisa is asking, as a tour operator, to what extent can you use other people's videos 
what do we have to produce our own? Of course, the issue of uh, copyright comes in, and uh, I hope you can also answer that. But as you continue asking your questions, KTB is also pleading, saying, please share with us your content so that we can tell the world what's Kenya doing. Uh, for Damien, Alice from France is saying, please, could you do subtitles in French to your presentation so that we can share it somewhere in France? I'll leave that to you. Uh, going through more questions, uh, can the content be used free of rights by private sector? Did you upload on the web, on the on their websites, etc. And the first question that came in when Damien was presented, Damien, how can we get hold of that gadget with eight SIM cards and how does it work? And of course, the next question is, how much does it cost? All right, Betty, you want to go first. Thank you, Mohammed, and thank you, Jim, for the question. Um, like you rightly say, film plays a great role in terms of being able to uh, showcase the destination, to market a destination, to get people to make the decision that says, I want to go where that film was shot. In fact, most people, when they consider um, uh, why they would um, uh, want to go to a destination, it's usually spurred by something they've seen. And you're quite right about uh, uh, the power of film. We've had two challenges. The challenge that most um, uh, organizations have that are in the filming industry is that for them to partner with a body such as ourselves, which is a marketing body, there's got to be an environment that is enabling for the filming um, uh, to take place. And, and this is driven largely by incentives. Incentives from the destination that uh, deal with both uh, licensing, it deals with um, uh, rebates, it deals, uh, it deals with uh, waivers on especially equipment, and, and also um, enablement of people to be able to move uh, freely to be able to do that film. So if we don't have these challenges and um, you're willing for us to have a conversation around uh, what else we can do, um, especially if that side of, 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 of the actual producing of the film is taken care of, then by all means, we are open to be able to have a discussion around how we can uh, work together to be able to use a film as one of the challenge uh, as one of the channels that um, we use to market our destination we have great filming locations uh, we have uh, lots of directors who are already working in the, in the country and approach us and usually the challenge that we have is is around funding and is around being able to grant those incentives that are required by uh, production houses i hope that answers the question thank you Mo. Thank you go there's one more question for you. And someone is asking, why is KTB? Why does, how come that KTB does not have a dedicated TV channel? Maybe in the process you want to talk about the YouTube channel. Yeah? Number two, they're saying, when we give you content, will you give credits to the company that has given you content? Please, very quickly, and then we can move to Mark, I'm coming to you. One or two questions, please, as well. Yes. The easier one is if you give us content, we give credit. It is something that we're already doing online and we'll be more than pleased to acknowledge um, uh, the people that give us this content. Um, it is one of the basis of us actually running this webinar is to encourage people to share content with us because it's the, it's the easiest way for a destination to be able to capture different experiences. A dedicated television channel, it is hardly in our mandate. I understand that uh, it is an opportunity that we can use, but um, it, it's a bit difficult for us to be able to include um, broadcasting in our mandate, which is marketing and uh, being a net recipient of funds. But it is not a bad idea for um, a, a marketing tool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for you, Mark from Joyce Mudoni. How can a tour agency plan for marketing expenditure when they're not earning any revenue? What budgets are they likely to expect for digital marketing? Basically, she's asking you, what's the ROI? You're asking me to put money in digital. And you know, it is said, when you cannot touch it, you don't feel it, it's like you feel like it's wasted money. And digital mm -hmm. space is a big challenge. Quickly, two minutes, explain to us. Yeah, sure. I think, I think uh, look, I, I, I mean, first of all, I mean, I, I empathize. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough time. and. As a tour operator specifically, who is uh, somewhat of an intermediary, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a tougher time as well. I'd say that if uh, if it's local, 
if we're talking about local tourism and um, and getting local audiences to visit and interact with destinations or with uh, venues, it's about creating experiences that work for uh, our COVID times. Uh, and so there's there's an idea here of reinvention. To be quite honest, I think as a as a tour operator who can't necessarily rely on on, on sending people outside of county lines, if you're within any of the restricted counties like Nairobi, the question there is, you know, what's a what's a COVID friendly experience? And that's obviously there's a, there's a you know, it's all these caveats of distance and masks and so on. But but what what is that? And what could that look like for people who've been in the house? I think as as has been said here for for so long and are looking for what I might call a concierge service. So that might mean you're moving away from to operating towards almost event planning and creating an experience. But uh, if that's necessary, I think then, um, then, then so be it. And then for the international side, I would say that it, it definitely depends on keeping an ear on, on when the, the, the proverbial sky is open. I mean, I think, um, Mohammed, we were discussing in the previous forum where you raised it. You know, we have, some of us have seen a video of some, uh, some, tourist landing i believe it's in tanzania with masks i think they were from sweden and just walk, walk in that journey so the question there is you know was there an operator in this case and what was that journey like so it, it, if, if you are depending on international travel that one i think you need to be sensitive to the time because you can perhaps even you know explore things like email marketing that's why i said your list of contacts is so important because if you can send out a timely update um or pick people in the countries where you know the restrictions have been lifted. So if you know that, let's say we open, let's just say in, in July, our sky is open um, and, and there's certain countries that you know can travel in, then it might be a good time to start to prepare for that marketing. So that's working on your creatives and, and some of the other assets and then launching it shortly before that. At this point, there's some uncertainty, but for local and international, um, Mohammed, that would be my, uh, my, my feedback and advice. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mark. Uh, there's a story that goes that uh, says, uh, you know, the, was it Riglas or Coca-Cola? A CEO was being piloted and someone asked him, why do you keep advertising? Yet you're very popular. He looked at the young pilot and said, we are already airborne. Why the hell are you still running the engine? So if you think you're popular enough or you think it's too expensive to advertise or to market yourself, then try the other way you do nothing. And some of the stuff online really doesn't cost any money. It's for you to create the time and the content which Devin has taken us through. I think at this point now, I would like to ask uh, Maggie, is the poll ready? Results, poll results. Actually, while she's doing that, Mohammed, can I jump in? Yes, Damien, because surprisingly I'm looking through the questions. There's virtually no questions for you. Everybody's saying, can we have Damien's presentation? Uh, okay, right. Damien, please step in. Yeah. Before we, before uh, we, Damien, as you do that, uh, the, the, bef okay, go ahead, uh, Damien. There's a reason why this is important. Um, I just wanted to, you guys, I see you, you love the content that we showed you. I want to just quickly introduce a couple of the guys that are working with me here in the field. The reason I need to do it now is that uh, if any of you know Tolstoy, who's the, now the biggest tusk bull elephant, so he's actually near us here and these guys want to go and, and, and film him. Uh, so I just want to quickly introduce these guys and give them credit for the great content that you saw. Uh, Wycliffe, who is the guide, who's been getting us around all the logistics and interpreters for us. Chege, who's doing an amazing job of having to edit in the field, literally with his full edit suite and computer in the middle of no place. Uh, Thank doing you, Chege. The, uh, and Bobby Neptune, our lead camera and also aerial man who has his own paramotor and flies with his camera uh, who've been working with us on all that content. I just want to say thank you to them because they're literally going to rush off to go and film this elephant right now. And thanks to you, Damian. Thank you very much and thank you everyone, you know, and looking forward to see you guys when you get down to the coast. Once again, thank you very much, Damian, and you need to move. We understand. Please we'll wrap back. up on our scene. These guys We're go. on the way up. <laughs> see you guys. Oh, okay, cheers. Thank you. Also, Damian, you're remaining. That is good. Okay. Do we have the poll result on the screen? We have it on the screen? Good. What online marketing tool do you use? Websites only, 8%. Social media only, one or more, 19%. Website and social media combined, 73%, which means we are doing well. Not too bad, but social media and websites, we should be hitting 99%. So there we go. Do you have a dedicated digital team? It's almost 50-50. It's actually TS. 50% have said yes, 
another 50 percent have said no we have a lot of catch up to do no wonder namibia have taken the water over our uh, safari uh, from uh, you know fr from us we need to take it back and then how often do you engage online it goes back to number two if you don't have a dedicated digital team 50 percent then you'll be very close to that so it's only 57 percent uh daily weekly 32 percent monthly six percent rarely six percent never zero percent which is good which means many of us are already there but we need to grow the daily figure to something probably 80 90 and more percent once again thank you very much uh, for that one ladies and gentlemen we need now to come uh, uh we need to come to a close and as we do that i'd like to ask our panelists and i'll start off um with mark you've got one minute to wrap and then i'll come to uh, damien and then betty thank you mark sure thank you mohammed um yeah just encouraging everyone i think who's been here for this um you know ktb is doing uh, what i would call the macro you know they they're, they're making uh, the space for you and your content. And then they've made opportunities like this possible, you know, for training and professional development to spur you into action. And I think as, as David said, just that, that spirit of competition uh, is great. You know, see that bigger picture and just look at, look at you. You know, you have your guides, you have your space, your property, your destination, and only you have your history of all the travelers who come with you. That database for me, those relationships for me, I want to continue to nurture at this time, whether on social, whether on email, whether on WhatsApp status, you, you name the place, look back and look at the content they've created for you and, and find ways also to spruce up your, uh, your employee number one, that, uh, that website, and, and just be consistent. You know, forgive yourself for the, the slow start, uh, but just, just, just try to do it and pick it up and you'll get to better and better content along the way. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mark, once again, and I'll thank you guys, you know, towards the, uh, as, as we finish. But faith was or was, was, was or Wahome? I think I need to touch on that. And uh, Betty, we've had this many times about filming in Kenya. She says, the issue on filming has always been the red tape and no defined licensing for the filmmakers. We recently had a group that wanted to film, but the cost was prohibited. They were charged for the equipment at the airport, they were charged for licensing the Kenya Film Corporation. They were charged again by the county government, and the list goes on and on and on. I think, Betty, mm -hmm. uh, filmmakers is the easiest way for us to be known out there. It's something as KTF and KTB, we need to work together and influence government so that the filmmakers don't have to struggle. In fact, photographers get arrested even in Nairobi to take pictures. It's crazy. All right, Damien, back to you and unmute yourself and we hear from you. You have two minutes, Damien. Thanks, Mohammed. Um, yeah, all great stuff. This was a great session this afternoon. Um, and very interesting to see that poll from my perspective. And Kenya is a very advanced digital country. We all know that by any standards. Look at KOT, look at our huge profile on social media, but we need to invest more in the digital space when you see those figures that we have there. We have an incredible skill set in this country. Uh, I'm so happy to see Mark, who I met when a very long time ago when he was a very young guy. <laughs> He's still a very young guy. Uh, but back in the early days of kind of digital pioneering in this country, he was one of the first uh, people I remember engaging with. And it's so fantastic to see him, uh, what, what he's done with himself and, and, and in this space. We have the talent and resources here in this country. Um, and secondly, uh, this issue that's come up about sharing, about uh, KTV sharing your content, you sharing KTV's content, that's what this environment is. There used to be this expression that content is king. I say not anymore. Content's now a democratically elected leader and it's based on popularity. And it is a democracy. It is a space about sharing. And KTB will share your content if it's aligned to their messages and you share it in the right way with the right hashtags. Of course, give credit and tag that content for you, but equally you'll get that credit, but don't think it's favoritism if someone else gets that credit as well. This is, as we said, about co-opetition as Mark just reinforced. It's a sharing space. If there's something you don't want shared, don't post it online, as I always say. If you're that concerned about copyright, don't put it online because this is a democratic space um, for sharing. Uh, the content community idea that we took out to the industry last year in October, what you're now seeing and what we're doing is the fruition of that. Um, that's something that KTB wants to continue doing and creating actual communities within the industry 
that share content together around regions, around specific activities and travel products, and using K2B as a platform to deliver that content out to the world. That is the content community model that is dominating tourism that started in Australia, that spread through Canada uh, and other leading, New Zealand and other leading destinations. And we want Kenya to go the same way. And it's about creating the sense of community. And more than ever now with COVID hitting us and the challenges we face, that sense of community and us working together is what will help us succeed. And again, I repeat that line I said, a rising tide lifts all of the boats. So let's make sure that tide's lifted by all of us together. Thank you very much, uh, Damien, once again, as always, you know, uh, we all look forward to engage you more and more. Betty, Dr. Betty Radia, give us the final Thank thoughts. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, Mo, and thank you for all of the participants uh, on, the, on the webinar. I think um, the objective was for us to share what is available um, for us to do together. Uh, secondly, it was to share the opportunity that everybody who is in our industry can do with us. Um, we cannot take um, uh, the, the role of saying that we will be able to uh, uh, we will be able to, to collect or collate or identify all of the experiences that are available in the destination. But we say that everybody who works in the business has an opportunity to be part of marketing the destination. And really, this is what this evening is, this, this afternoon, this evening is about. It's to allow people to utilize the skill that they already have in their backyard. Everybody who is in the business of tourism is selling or fulfilling on one sort of experience or other. Here's an opportunity just to capture it and for us to help you, support you, uh, be able to put this content out there and to be able to showcase the destination, which is really what our mandate is. Uh, remember, as we mentioned, we are looking for inspiration. Content that you have, that you collect every day, that has a story to tell, you want uh, to be able to connect with people. You want to be able to, to appreciate the things that people do not necessarily know about the destination or share about the destination. You have people coming into your, in, into your, into your um, experiences. You have people visiting with you. You have uh, probably travelers, as, as Mark said, who visited with you even a year ago and generated what we're calling user-generated content. It is still relevant. Because sometimes you look at it and you think this is the client's content. We look at it and we see an opportunity to be able to show up the, the destination in a completely different lens, uh, which is authentic because when people share content that they have produced, they tend to want it to look quite natural and they achieve it. And that really is what destinations and, and destination marketing is moving towards. So we urge you to please share any content you have with us, videos, and we're able to work together to be able to, during this time, when uh, this is not available uh, for us to be able to capture, we are happy for you to be able to share it with us. We look forward to hearing from you and we look forward to receiving lots and lots of content. And also for you to be able to uh, begin to take the initiative and, 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 and capture what you have around you in places where possibly you are shut down in a very amazing environment. Thank you, Mo, and thank you uh, to all our... Thank you very much, uh, Betty. And uh, I have a surprise for my panelists and everyone out here. It's not something we've discussed, but there's no harm in having a pleasant surprise. And wherever you are, you know, Africans and Kenya, music is in our blood, all right? And Damien said it, that we need to be it's no longer about competition. We need to be together as we navigate through these waters. Please, wherever you are, put your hands together and dance to this as we come to the end. We need to lean on each other. Yeah. Please. Damien? Vicky, are you getting the music?
Where's my Damien? I miss you down wherever you are. Your hands together, Betty. We need to see you now. Maggie. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I think there's no better way to end the session. Once again, thank you very much. And please get home to bid the curfew, 9 p.m. Once again, Betty, thank you very much. <laughs> Peter Gashiro for IMAG, thank you very much. And thank you, everyone. Bye and stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye.